Ladies and gentlemen, the stage is set and we are here. This is it. The time has come. I said the time has come. From the four corners of the world to the four corners of this ring right here in Sheffield, England. The fight starts now! Introducing first the challenger. He fights out of the red corner and wears the blue and gold. He scaled eight stone, 13 pounds, three ounces. His professional record, 31 victories, two defeats, one draw, with eight wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Leeds, England, here is the former British, Commonwealth, and European champion, and the former two-time IBF featherweight champion of the world, the Leeds warrior, Josh Wigdon. Warrington! And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. He is a defending world champion. He wears the white, green, and gold. He scaled eight stone, 13 pounds, seven ounces, and his professional record, 27 victories, three defeats, with 16 big wins coming by way of knockout. Proudly fighting out of his home of Gedling, Nottingham, England, here is the former Commonwealth featherweight champion, the former British featherweight champion, and the reigning and defending WBA featherweight champion of the world, Lethal Lee Ward! Ward! Lee, time now for the final instructions from our referee, Wait. Michael Alexander, calls Lee Wood forward. Right, lads, you both know the rules, so let's just have a good, clean fight, OK? Most of all, we have to defend yourselves at all times, all right? Just go keep it clear. It's such an intriguing match. It's been so talked about. Barry Jones alongside me. Your thoughts quickly, Barry. Oh, this is just cannot help fail but to deliver such excitement. The two guys here who both want to be aggressive, one big puncher, one with a great chin. It all just gears up for a really good fight tonight. Well and for Warrington, the Leeds United fans banked up away to our right. For Wood, the Nottingham Forest fans away to our left. They've split it down the middle and it's action right from the start as Warrington looks to unload and Wood just holds on momentarily. The general sense was that Wood would win the fight at long range like he did the rematch against Mauricio Lara. But sometimes he can't help himself, can't help himself at getting to a fight. And it's Warrington who wants to close the gap to short and mid-range and win from that kind of range, throwing those booming hooks to head and body. Wood again holding on, but already significantly Wood landing jabs to head and body. Wood trying to stop that Warrington momentum. Intriguing start, but the sort of start that we might have predicted as well. Left hook from Warrington, lands on the chin there of Wood. Warrington, right from the start, has come out like a runaway train here. And he's got his hands high, he's waiting, he's waiting, then he's jumping into his, his attacks there, just well done. And when he gets close, he's working out body, that's all investment for the later on in the fight. Warrington in those Leeds United colours of blue and yellow here, the yellow trim on the back of those trunks, Wood in white and in green. Warrington, the hair shaved close to the scalp, Wood with the curls that he describes as his perm as he comes forward again trying to find his range early on with that jab he's struggling to do so at the moment this time Warrington holds halfway through a frenetic opening round but we didn't expect anything less right hand from Wood lands on the chin there of Warrington an early test for the chin of Josh Warrington and Warrington now banging away to the body of Wood Wood with his back to the ropes over on the far side of the ring here in Sheffield remember 40 minutes from Ellen Road in Leeds just over an hour from the 
city ground in Nottingham. That's why this WBA featherweight championship is taking place here. A world title between two British fighters here in the UK. A rare thing indeed. A thrilling night here in Sheffield. Wood looks to unload again with a right hand, but Warrington just ducks inside it that time. But he is starting to find the range with that right hand now, Lee Wood. A real frantic start from, from Josh Warrington. He just slowed down a little bit, and that's allowed Wood just to get a bit more range and power in that right hand. And Wood switches momentarily to southpaw. He likes to do that. He says that it relaxes him. It makes him just uh, relax into his work a little bit. It's what he's trying to do. And he looked to land a long left hand, but he missed with that. And Warrington made him pay. Closing 30 seconds of this opening round. Wood still from that southpaw stance, looking for the left of the body this time. Looking to make Warrington think, looking to push Warrington onto the back foot. That's where Lee Wood wants him. Left hand behind that southpaw jab from Wood again as they hold and wrestle and battle in the centre of the ring. It's a close opening round. It's another chopping right hand from Lee Wood. And three or four of those right hands might just have won in this opening round. Jab to body again. Warrington finishing with a flourish. Just frenetic here in Sheffield. 10,000 fans, one referee and two boxers delivering like we wanted them to deliver. What an opening round, what a crowd, what an atmosphere, what a night. Everything we've wanted and expected, Barry, since we heard about the fight four or five years ago, since it was made public and official two months ago. That was exactly the type of start I, fit, I expected. Fast and furious from both of them. It was. It was important for Josh Warren to start fast and take, no, not give... First 20 seconds. Not give with any momentum and, no, and also to make him panic a little bit. And I thought it worked, but then after like a minute and a half, which is halfway through the round, he slowed down a bit. I don't know to land with the quality of shots. No, no it's pretty much no. How, who wins that round? Quality over quantity. And you have to say, Probably the quality in the, in the forward well, I, I think shot. it might have been that final second draft and that final south for right hook that Wood landed, which I think second hurt Warrington round, almost round on the bell. That's that for me gives that round slightly to Wood. Round two gets underway in this tremendous atmosphere here at the Sheffield Arena. Wood, interestingly enough, has started out as a south four again. Now he did talk about tactics. And he did so with a smile on his face in uh, the week building up to the fight. And you wondered whether he might just offer a little more from that southpaw stance than we're used to. And here he comes again as a southpaw trying to land that straight left hand. Just trying to befuddle Josh Warrington a little bit because we know what Warrington wants to do. He wants to march forward. He wants to land those hooks. But Wood, at the moment, has Warrington at the kind of range where he wants him here. He does. It was a bit better start again from the round from, from Warrington. He'll hands high, getting low, coming in close. But again, no. He's backing up, and that's another Wood. More confidence at the centre of the ring, as we're seeing here now, dominating with the jab. Yeah, Wood behind that southpaw jab, and behind that he's looking to land the left of the body. He does love landing the jab to the stomach, Lee Wood. It just knocks his opponent off balance, and as Warrington tries to come forward, big left uppercut there from Wood. Now, we saw him use the uppercut from the other stance to great effect against Lara, but he landed that flush on the jaw of Josh Warrington, who took the punch well. Warrington, of course, always says that he has more power than people give him credit for, and Carl Frampton, for one, would agree with that. And forward now comes Warrington, throwing those booming hooks, trying to get inside that southpaw jab of Lee Wood. That is where the fight is going to be won and lost, at that range. Can Warrington get inside the jab? He can't there, because Wood lands a combination onto the head of Josh Warrington. Warrington pouring away with a jab of his own, and then a left jab to the body from Lee Wood, still out of that southpaw stance, Wood. Pushing forward, trying to close the distance, as Warrington does likewise, using his feet. He tries to close the distance, Warrington, behind a double jab. Just a little slip there from Warrington as he came in. Wood again looking for that left uppercut, and that might just be a real money punch for him here as we head into the final minute of this second round. And the problem he's got here, Warrington, he knows he has to close the gap. He's lacking a little bit of energy after those, those fast starts, but he's walking on the shots that he doesn't like to take. Wood has that power there to make you think before you move, and Warrington doesn't need that. So many questions before this fight. Some of them may be close to being answered. One of them, how would Wood look after refueling? Many felt he was very, very tight at the weight yesterday. He said he's going to move up to super featherweight. Whatever happens in this fight, when well, he looks fine at the moment, of course, you can't always tell. That can happen 
later on in a fight, but he looks well here, Lee Wood, and he started well as Warrington tries to come forward and land something of significance, but at the moment, Wood is just dominating behind that southpaw jab, and he's slowing things down. He's looking to find his range, and he lands a left hand, a good straight left, and then another. Warrington responds with a right hand over the top, and again they come close together as we march towards the end of this second round here in Sheffield. And just a timeout called here from... Michael Alexander and a warning for Josh Warrington for punching around the back of the head, all in very good spirits, met with a big smile from Josh Warrington at the end of round two. Leewood looks an awful lot bigger and he's so much calmer. I'm, I'm quite amazed at how, how much calmer he looks and how agitated Josh Warrington looks. I saw Josh in the week, Barry, and I, and I, and I thought the intensity was good. I'm seeing him here tonight and I'm not quite so sure in my interpretation of it on Thursday was correct. Wood just seems so much calmer. Warrington's style is all based on intensity of his work. Now, it looked like in his last fight when he lost in a close decision against Lopez that that intensity has lost a bit. Now, he's half the fighter without that intensity, more than any other fighter. And it looks like that tonight where he's starting fast, he can't maintain that effort of pace that he needs to put Wood under pressure. And that's allowing Wood time to set up those, those big long shots. But it's, it's, it's once or twice there, it looked like he was panicking and trying to close down the ground. And I'm surprised to see him panicking or looking Round like he's panicking three. this early in a fight. On that, Steve, Lee Wood said a couple of days ago that he'd noticed a change in Josh Warrington as this fight got closer. He said with a smile on his face that he started to swear a little bit more, that he looks a bit edgy and maybe he's brought that into the ring here. Warrington tries to set the pace from the start of this third round. World Championship Boxing here on Five Live. Warrington now unloading his wood, backs into the ropes and wood was hurt there. Warrington with his back to us, unloaded. Headshots there. He did close the gap that time, all right. And Wood, just for a moment, looked to be on unsteady legs. And as we always do at these moments, we look at the legs of Lee Wood and we wonder. But he just looks to have settled again. He shakes out his arms and he tries to get back into a rhythm. But a rhythm that was disrupted there for the first time tonight by Josh Warrington. And that was clever for Warrington. He was going over, punching high, swinging, hooping hooks over the top and just catching Wood flush, and he was in trouble. Left hook and right hand from Warrington, comfortably his best moments in the fight so far, and Warrington lands an uppercut there and looked to land it again as Wood ducked in low. Josh Warrington now suddenly starts to apply the pressure. A minute and 15 seconds into this third round, Wood dominating calmly and coolly in that second, but Warrington has really come to the party now, roared on by these fans, away to our right, he lands a right hook to the head of Lee Wood, Wood with his back against the ropes, up to our right here, then Warrington close to being low with the left of the body, and Michael Alexander gives Josh Warrington a long look and says, come on Josh, keep them up, that was as the saying goes, below the belly button, Barry. It was the oh, good right hand there from, from Josh Warrington. It's a great round this for Warrington so far as we head for its final minute, but he has his back into his own corner, but he uses his feet really well. You can see though in the face of Lee Wood, he's been disturbed by the start that Warrington made to this round. He was certainly hurt as well by those hooks to the head, but that's a good straight left hand by Lee Wood. This is turning into the kind of fight we hoped that it would be as Warrington lands another left hook there, and Wood again takes a backward step. It's turning into one of those fights but you don't know which way it's going to go next. Wood just starting to dominate, we thought, but Warrington has turned things around really impressively in this third round. Again, Wood pouring with that southpaw jab. Warrington just biding his time on his back foot, waiting to land a big right hand, and he didn't miss by far. Warrington with that guard held so high, that's almost his trademark. He lands a right to the body and then just missed with a left hook, but two more right hands to the body, and then Warrington with booming hooks, and then Wood responds, and I think Wood might have been hurt there with a right to the body. Huge hook then by Warrington. Great drama, great drama at the end of round three here as Wood looks to respond, but what a round. What a round this has been from Josh Warrington. Lee Wood marked heavily under the right eye, hurt repeatedly with body shots, head shots, unbelievable amount of borderline shots going in from the pair of them. Let's get that right. Barry, that was a dominant round, a massively dominant round by Josh Warrington. I was quite surprised at how Lee Wood suddenly stopped moving his feet. Well, it's not so much that Warrington rushed him, 
And then when he got him on the ropes, he did what he does best. He gets really close, puts that forearm on your chest, and then swings those hooks from head to body. That's why someone goes low, because he's too close. What astounds me, though, is every time Leroy gets hurt, he always finds space to fire a power shot back. And that kept him in the fight there a few times. When, he's get, when he does get caught with two or three shots, providing he's not back against the ropes, which as Dave said, he spent an awful lot of that round. He does, as you say, back off and he does find a bit of space, he does find a bit of room. There are, I'm just going to leave this out there now, a lot of very reckless heads and shoulders going in. We've got a mark underneath his eye, perhaps things could deteriorate for the pair of them. Yeah, the marked face of Lee Wood as round four gets underway with a stiff jab there from Josh Warrington, who's taken great confidence from his performance in that third round. Still, those gloves held high either side of his head, but now Warrington bobs from side to side and bounces off the balls of his feet. It's the Josh Warrington that we're used to seeing, or at least we were in those glory days when he built towards that 30-0 record that night then that it all went wrong in silence. In those post-COVID fights, Mauricio Lara just caught him with left hook after left hook, but it's Josh Warrington who's unloaded a couple of left hooks here and just misses with one there. Lee Wood looked a stationary target there momentarily, and Lee Wood just needs to gather himself and regroup in this fight. But as Steve said, he so often has been able to do that. Right hook from Warrington following a left hand from Wood, but it looks like Warrington's the fighter landing the heavier shots at the moment. Wood is the fighter taking the backward step here. Well, it's Lee Wood got a good shot there from one of them. It's Lee Wood coming forward, it's one of them blocking and comforting. Nice high guard, taking the shots on the gloves and trying to fire back immediately. Another right hand to the body that looked low to me from our angle here at ringside from Josh Warrington. But if you think at the start of the fight, what we talked about was distance, was where this fight would take place. At the moment, Josh Warrington is fighting at mid-range and at close range, and he's landing those shots, and he's pushing Leeward back, and he does so again with a looping left hook. He just misses with a right hand. Again, Wood, with a startled look on his face, takes a backward step, looks to regroup, and will look to land that straight left hand. Big booming hook again from Warrington, followed by a right uppercut. Josh Warrington at the moment, rolling back the years here, the 32-year-old, again, the 35 year old Lee Wood a left hook there from Warrington lands again and Wood trying to stay calm amidst this storm hoping that it will subside but at the moment Warrington isn't going anywhere huge right hand followed by a left hook but once again Wood takes it but of course these punches having a cumulative effect here it's another excellent round from Warrington every time one of them lands with a shot you can see the physical effect there on Lee Wood but Lee Wood recovers somehow he has that 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 in, in him he just recover and fire back but it's been a fantastic round of discipline and composure here from Josh Warrington Goodness me, so often you build up these big fights, you build up these domestic scraps and they disappoint you. This one is not disappointing. 30 seconds to go in round number four. Wood had Warrington with his back to the ropes that time. This time they clinch in centre ring. Michael Alexander pushes them apart. There is a cut above the right eye of Lee Wood and it looks significant. It's dripping just to the right of the eye, but I think some of it is dripping into the eye and it looks like a bad one as well. It looks like a big cut and that will encourage Warrington. Now Wood was cut against Lara and that got him going and pushed him forward, but Warrington with another big, big round. We're going to hear now from the Josh Warrington corner from Sean O'Hagan. Yeah, it's not great that sound in there. What a ferocious round. There were moments there when I thought Josh Warrington might have been a, a punch away. An awful lot of low blows getting in, heads going in, but forget that, forget the illegal shots or the borderline shots. Some crunching, fantastic shots from Josh Warrington. Wood has been hurt, he's been stunned, he's been pushed back. That clever right hand from Warrington is causing Wood so many trouble. Every time he gets caught with it, he's on wobbly legs. But again, I've got to say it, he somehow recovers and tries to fire back. Spike's not over, Barry, is what you're saying. Not over. Oh, it's never over. It's never over until it's over in this sport more than any other. Wood has had that cut just uh, dealt with momentarily at least, but we're going to keep a, an eye on that above the right eye, not on the corner of it, touching the corner a little bit, but 
It's enough over the eye that that blood, I think, will affect his vision out of that right eye. Maybe, maybe there'll be real urgency now from Lee Wood. That might mean he walks onto something, but it might also mean that he finds a home for that right hand. It's Warrington at the moment with his back to the ropes right in front of us. There's still swelling under that right eye of Wood, the eye that is cut as well. Right hand from Warrington, then Wood lands a right hand, but once again, Warrington gets into range, lands a right hook, and Warrington is having this fight at the moment exactly where he wants it. Little smile from Warrington to the referee, Michael Alexander, because that punch looked a little bit low from Lee Wood. A big, deep gulp of breath taken by Wood. He is suffering a little bit in there. Wood, remember, the favourite with the bookmakers before this fight, but there were a lot of people in the trade that I spoke to who felt that Warrington might just be the fighter who would come out on top because of his style, because of his durability, because of the level of opposition that he had fought before. Wood is up against somebody here who's been in with some very, very good fighters and who has responded to these big moments before. A seventh world title fight for Warrington and he's only lost one of those. Jab to the body from Wood, almost a little apologetic there. The pace has been frenetic, but Warrington doubling up the jab and Wood stumbled there, but I think it was a stumble. I'm not sure it was caused by a punch as Wood lands a combination and Wood landing an uppercut. And more great action here in round five as we head towards its final minute. Well, Wood's been stalking Warrington, throwing shots, but most of the shots have been getting blocked by Warrington. And we just see here he's unloading with a nice combination there, Josh Warrington. But again, from that high guard, elbows tucked in tight. The voice there, the former world champion Barry Jones, along with me, Dave Farris, Steve Bunce, here on Five Live World Championship Boxing. Live from this Sheffield Arena, febrile atmosphere, Leeds against Nottingham Forest, and at the moment, Leeds are having the better of it. It was a great start from Lee Wood, but Josh Warrington, since then, has taken over. The pace, surely, will slow soon. When it does, that might favour Lee Wood, but if Warrington can keep working at this rate, keep going, keep hurting Lee Wood like he is now, Warrington will fancy the job here. Left hook from Warrington lands. 20 seconds to go in round number five. Warrington winning every exchange at the moment. And that's so important to these fighters. When they come together, you have to have the final word in the exchange. And Warrington has done that so well and so skillfully. Another round for Warrington, surely in round five. Brutal exchanges in close. Brutal exchanges high. They looked like a, a moment there, the first 30 or so seconds, when Lee Wood went back to the jab. Threw a couple of straight right hands, then Josh seems to just adjust his head, get a bit closer. But before I ask you for what you what you think you saw in that round, how have you got the score? We're going to do it after five. We don't generally do it, but we're, we're going to do it today. I have a 3-2 for Josh Warrington. Same as me. I do. Yeah, I, I just think and even in that round there, he started the round like he found out the pattern of, of, of Lee Wood's work. I just, rather than put piling forward, stay nice and tight, let Lee Wood walk on, and when he throws a shot, you take it on the arms, and you fire on the, the right down the middle straight away. But he took a while to get going in that round, Warren, yeah. but at the end there, the quality of his work, the weight of his shots, had Wood in trouble yet again. If you're listening to this in a car, if you're listening to Ten this at home with your scores. feet up, and it sounds like Lee Wood is against the ropes, hurt, worried, cut, and in fact suffering, he, he might very well be, six. but take it from me, he loves saving lost causes. He loves it, Dave. He certainly does. He's done it so many times. He won the world title against Kanju in a fight. He was winning, but he won that in the 12th. And then there was the fight of the year against Michael Conlon. And what a fight that was when Wood dropped heavily early, turned it round with that sensational knockout, knocked Conlon out of the ring in round 12. Never, ever right off Lee Wood, beaten by Lara, then came back to beat him with a surprising display when he almost Boxed on the back foot, boxed behind his jab, controlled the fight, albeit against a fighter who may just have over-celebrated. Nothing wrong with Josh Warrington's preparation here again. He unloads those booming hooks. Wood suggesting the punch was round the back of the head. And Wood was asked in the build-up to this fight about Warrington's tactics. He said, I've never seen anything wrong with them. Maybe he is right now because Warrington is using every single trick accumulated over the years. Fight number 35 for Josh Warrington, 261 rounds before tonight to Woods 163. He might be three years younger, Josh Warrington, but he's been in more wars and he lands a right hand there to the temple of Lee Wood just for a moment. Staggered Wood, 
but Wood just trying to recuperate here, trying to slow things down and trying to use that left jab. He's fighting now, Wood, out of that orthodox stance. It's brilliant tactics here from Josh Warrington. He's just covering up, like I said in the last round. Every time Wood throws a shot, he blocks it and he fires with the same hand straight away. But there's a gap with Wood bringing the punch back. There's a gap there for Warrington to aim for. Well, Warrington said that Wood makes mistakes and he'd make him pay. Wood said exactly the same about Josh Warrington. They're very, very complimentary about each other. In fact, Josh Warrington, during one long conversation, said this is a bit like one of those dating apps. We're being so nice about each other. There's nothing nice about this. Round six, it's tough. It's all action. And at the moment, it's Josh Warrington who is on top here. Not definitively so, you never are against Lee Wood, but as we reach the final minute of round number six, the pace has just slowed a little bit, but Josh Warrington being very, very clever here. Again, he just ducks and he bobs and he waits for his moment and he tries to get inside the jab of Lee Wood and he's done it over and over. He's managed to avoid that lead left hand and just get inside and land those hooks to head and body. That was always going to be Josh Warrington's route to victory. And at the moment, it's Lee Wood who needs to turn the tide of this fight. A snaking jab from Warrington, almost taking on Wood at his own game this time. As Wood lands a rather desultory right hand with 12 seconds to go in round number six here. The pace slowing significantly, as I said. They wrestle now two tired men even at the end of the sixth in the center of the ring and we're gonna hear in a few moments time from that lee wood corner and there won't be any panic in there from ben davison but there will certainly be significant words coming up in fact ben davison has just said to michael alexander watch the punches to the back of the head but having spoken to the referee he'll now speak to his fighter um. Yeah, you're not active enough for that big jab. You're just putting it out in space. You need more jab, more right hands to the body. You're sitting in the shoulder roll. So that's it. Right more jab. jabs, more right hands to the body. The bit of success he had at the start of the fifth round were from more jabs and more right hands to the body. Easier said than done. Barry, some of those crunching body shots, low ones or borderline or legal ones, they have to take a toll. We can hear them here. You and I are ooh and ahhing as they land. I would say one of them might have thrown as many punches below the belt than he has above the belt. But Second Leeward round, got dynamite. He got dynamite in the right hand. Let it go. You've got to let it go now. So we move now into round seven here in Sheffield. We move into the second half of the fight. Not necessarily the hardest fight to score. Josh Warrington surely ahead here. You would feel by four rounds to two. But of course, we never take anything for granted. Not after what happened last weekend in Vegas. More of that maybe later, but huge controversy there on that Canelo Alvarez undercard. As Lee Wood in the centre of the ring now pours out that left jab. Can he just slow things down? Can he get himself into a position to land that big, booming right hand that can do so much damage? Michael Conlon is here ringside. He knows all about that. He does land the right hand to the body, but once again, Warrington responds straight away, doubles up the left hook, and then lands a big right hand of his own. But again, timeout called here from Michael Alexander. Warning about punching to the back of the head, and he's going to deduct a point. He's got Josh Warrington by the left glove and in a fight that may yet end up being close, Barry, that could be significant. More than the point, he's wary how he throws his right hand now. He knows he loops that right hand on the top. He has to adjust it now. Remember that moment, but Warrington seems spurred on by it. Landed that jab right into the face of Wood and followed up with a right hand over the top. He's one of those fighters, Josh Warrington. You know what he's going to do. When you're up against him, you know what the tactics are going to be, but it's very, very hard to stop. And Lee Wood is finding that here. He's being swarmed and outworked here by Josh Warrington. Outthought as well. Good stiff left hand there from Warrington. Just backs up Lee Wood. Wood not able really to have any significant success here. As Warrington again, the roars from the Leeds fans away to my right, pushes Wood back. And Wood is starting to look a little bit battered and beleaguered. But of course, Wood does have the power of that right hand that we've seen so many times. He has that equaliser, and Warrington will know all about that. Warrington has been hurt and stopped by power shots himself, and Lee Wood knows that as Warrington will try and protect his chin, because Warrington has done so much right here so far. But now he backs up as Wood switches again to Southpaw, and then a big 
right hand from Warrington followed by the left hook as we move into the final minute here of round number seven. I said Wood might be worried, uh, Warrington might be worried about throwing the right hand, he hasn't. As soon as he got one and he came out, threw a lovely right hand again. Tactically, this has been fantastic so far from Josh Warrington. Absolutely fantastic. Is there a cut just on the head of Warrington? There's certainly blood on the head of Warrington. It may have come from the cut on Lee Wood's eye. And Wood just blinking from that right eye a little bit. Wood looking to land the uppercut, but he fell short that time. And Warrington, as Wood came forward, tried to land a huge right hook. And Warrington just pushes Lee Wood back to the rope and looks to unload. Warrington looks the stronger man in there. He's the smaller man, but he pushes Wood back. More pressure from Warrington as Wood looks to land a left hook. But again, it's Warrington who throws multiple punches. They don't all land, but it's the pressure, just the pressure here from Warrington that is maybe wearing Wood down. The Wood with a huge combination draws Warrington. That is remarkable. And here's the count. Warrington is out on his feet and it is over. Unbelievable. Lee Wood once again has turned it round. Whoa. Just absolutely whoa. What happened there? He was getting a not school, but one of them was boxing so well. And all of a sudden, three hooks and he's out out on his feet and went down in slow motion, went down in instalments. One shot, two shots, three shots, four shots, and down he went. And there was a sickening look on Josh Warrington's face because he knew that was it. What a finish. The bell was sounding as he went down, Dave. That is what Lee Wood brings. I gave people on their sofas, in their cars, in their kitchens, listening on headsets as they walked home. I gave them the warning. I let them know that's what Lee Wood can do. Right now, right in front of you, look at that, Dave. That's Lee Wood on his knees, consoling an inconsolable Josh Warrington. Well, Josh Warrington, when he got up, he was on the steady legs, he wobbled back to his corner, but he wasn't looking at the referee, but the referee was counting to eight, but he knew he was getting stopped. He was shaking his head. His face was just a face of absolutely just despair. Knowing he was boxing so well, but yet he knew that he was gonna, that he was gonna get stopped. That was it. Lee Wood. He's one of those fighters who, whether he's on the floor, whether he's almost out on his feet, he's always dangerous. I, I can barely remember a fighter like that. It's such a long time where you can give him a boxing lesson, you can beat him up, you can absolutely demoralise him in every quarter. He can even look broken, he can even look oh, like he's not liking it anymore. He was wobbly on his feet about what, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times tonight in certain parts of the fight. But, and, then, and the last few rounds getting hurt as well again, getting a totally old box. But all it takes is, Twists on the shoulder, left hook, right hook, and another left hook and a right hand there, right on the button to drop Joss Warrington, and he went, and he retains his title. That's what champions do. They resolve to dig through all the dirt, all those hard rounds, are getting outboxed, beat up at times, but just know I need one punch and one punch to change it, change oh. the pattern of the fight. And Lee Wood has that. You know what he knew when the first of those seven or eight punches went in. He just knew he had that look on his face, Josh Warrington. He knew that the fight had changed. He knew that this fight was over. He knew that his resistance was over. And it took, what, six or seven? I think it's six punches. Clean shots as he's going down, as I say, in instalments. That is sickening, unbelievable finishing. That is Lee Wood at his clinical, most desperate best. And there's a little clip we're seeing on the screen here, Dave, you saw it, with Michael Alexander looking, the referee looking into Josh Warrington's eyes. And Josh knows it, he's shaking his head, he knows it. Because he know what? He knows enough about boxing to know he couldn't continue. He does, he does, and it was just extraordinary from Lee Wood. It started with a short right hand, and we're watching Josh Warrington now, completely inconsolable, and he's sort of half arguing with Michael Alexander about the stoppage, but as Steve says, Barry, as you said, he knew straight away. I tell you what, though, it lived up to the hype, it lived up to his promise. This is always going to be a good fight on paper. That doesn't always turn out to be the case. That was everything and more what we yeah, hoped for. And absolutely. The first minute was great. The third round when Josh Warrington turned it round, changed the pace, changed the direction. 
some of those moments when Josh forced Lee Wood back to the ropes, and then, more importantly, the end. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Michael Alexander calls a halt to this contest at the end of round number seven, declaring your winner by TKO and still 